Let's turn our attention to a special kind of file called a compressed archive. Compressed archive files can come in very handy, and we'll take a look at why. To begin with, I should note that there are a variety of different compressed archive formats, and that generally speaking, they all serve the same purpose. By far, the most common of these is the zip format. So for now, we can forget about the others and focus on this one. By making a zip file, you can take a whole bunch of files and folders and put them all inside of a single compressed file that has a .zip extension. This is particularly useful when you have a bunch of files that you want to email to someone and you don't want to have to send every single one separately. You can imagine how long it would take to add 50 email attachments. The fact that a zip file can actually store a folder structure inside of it makes it even more useful. Not only could you send someone 50 files easily, you could have them already organized into subfolders as well. When you receive a zip file from someone, or when you download an application from the internet and it comes packaged as a zip file, the first thing you have to do is uncompress it. That's because all of those files and folders inside of the zip can't be accessed until they've been extracted. These days, most operating systems like Windows and Mac OS have a built-in ability to both create and extract zip files. Let's take a look now at exactly how that's done. We'll start with Mac OS. Creating a zip file is actually pretty easy. All I have to do is find some files that I want to zip. How about some Word documents? Select them, and then right-click and choose Compress 10 Items. As soon as I do that, I've got a new file in this same folder called archive.zip. This zip file could now be shared with someone via email or Dropbox or any other means, and as soon as they decompress it, they'll have a folder with all of these files inside. For example, I'll move this to my desktop, I'll double-click it, and notice now I have a folder called archive, and inside are all of those files. This is a really efficient way to share multiple files with people. Something that's even better is that you can actually zip entire folders and folder structures. So I could right click on Word Docs, choose Compress Word Docs. Now I've got a zip file called Word Docs that I could share with someone. They can double click that, they'll get a folder called the same name, and inside are all of those same documents. If I wanted to share all of these documents with someone, I could just right click on the main folder, choose Compress My Documents, and now I've got a zip file called My Documents that someone could open and get the entire folder structure saved. For example, I could delete this one to get it out of the way, double click this, it's extracting, and now I've got this My Documents folder back, including all of the subfolders. So this is a really good way to send people files in a folder structure that is already organized. Let's go through the same process in Windows so you can see the similarities and differences. Here we are on a Windows 7 desktop. Working with compressed archives in Windows is similar to Mac, but it's a little bit different in a few respects. If I want to take this folder called My Documents and make it into a zip file, I can right click, choose Send To, and then Compressed Zip Folder. Now I've got a file here on my desktop called MyDocuments.zip. The primary difference between Windows and Mac when working with zip files is that if I double click on my documents.zip it didn't automatically decompress the file into a folder like it does on Mac. Instead I'm exploring the zip file almost as though it were a folder itself and I can see that up here it says my documents.zip I'm actually looking at the contents of the zip file right now. I haven't decompressed it yet, I'm actually looking at the files inside of it. Now, if I were to double click on one of these files to open it, it would actually open in a strange temporary location on my hard drive. This is not an ideal way to work with compressed files. So what I recommend, if there's just one or two files that you want to access and you want to work on, you can just drag that file from the zip file to another location, like the desktop, 
And notice it has appeared here now. This file has been decompressed and you can now work with it like any other file. If you want to extract all of the files, there's a button here, extract all files, and that will unzip the entire zip file into a folder of the same name, just like you would get on a Macintosh when you double clicked. For sake of example, let me move this, these extra files to the trash. Now, I'm going to click extract all files. It will ask me the location that I want to place it. I'm going to go ahead and let it go to the desktop. Click extract. And when this finishes, you'll see a new folder on the desktop called My Documents. And here it is. My Documents on the desktop, which has all of my original files inside of it. So the primary thing to remember when working with zip files in Windows 7 is that you need to manually extract the files before you start working with them. Just double clicking on the zip file won't extract it. You either need to open the zip, find the file that you want, and copy it to a location for you to work on it, or you need to open the zip file and click extract all in order to extract all of the files. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you have a better understanding of how to work with zip files in Mac OS and Windows.